Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. In the midst of the enigmatic pages of the Book of Revelation, two mysterious women emerge. Each, with her unique narrative, rises as a protagonist in a plot filled with symbolism. Who are these women, whose actions trigger spiritual battles and prophesy events of divine magnitude? At the heart of this puzzle, we will also unveil the identity of the wife who has prepared herself to join Jesus, as described in the book of Revelation. If the topic has piqued your interest, I invite you to express your appreciation with a like, subscribe to the channel, and continue on the journey to discover the outcome of this fascinating narrative. Who is Jesus' wife in the book of Revelation? The book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse, marks the epilogue of the New Testament of the Bible. Written by the Apostle John during a period of intense persecution of Christians in the late first century, Revelation is unique in its apocalyptic and symbolic nature. Unlike other biblical books, Revelation does not present itself as a historical narrative or a letter addressed to a specific church. Instead, it is a divine revelation about the future and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. The work is filled with symbolic visions, such as dragons, beasts, seals, and trumpets, challenging literal understanding and inviting spiritual interpretation. John received these visions while on the island of Patmos, and they are presented as a series of revelations and prophecies granted to him by God. In the intriguing labyrinth of apocalyptic visions in the book of Revelation, two women stand out as powerful symbols, each representing opposing forces and carrying profound meanings. The first is the woman clothed with the sun, described in detail in Revelation, chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. The text recounts seeing a great sign in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant, in labor, and crying out in the pain of childbirth. Another sign in heaven revealed a great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and crowns on its heads. The dragon's tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. Thus, she gave birth to a male child destined to rule all the nations with an iron scepter. The child was snatched up to God and to his throne, while the woman fled into the wilderness, where God had prepared a place for her to be nourished for 1260 days. This intense and symbolic narrative reveals deep layers of spiritual and prophetic meaning. The description of the woman, like an artistic painting clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars adorning her head, is filled with symbolism, challenging us to decipher the divine codes inscribed in these images. She is not an earthly figure but a representation of something greater and celestial. The sun, as clothing, suggests a direct connection to divine light and the unquestionable truth of God. The moon under her feet can be interpreted as the foundation of faith, a solid ground that sustains her amid spiritual battles. The crown of twelve stars, a symbol of authority in divine choice, may represent the twelve tribes of Israel or the twelve apostles of Jesus. Various interpretations have emerged over the centuries. A common view sees the woman as a representation of Israel, with the twelve stars symbolizing the twelve tribes. This interpretation aligns with images from the Old Testament, where Israel is often personified as a woman. Another suggests that the woman is Mary, the mother of Jesus, who, amid the pains of childbirth and distress, gives birth to a son destined to rule the nations with an iron scepter, interpreted by many as a direct representation of Jesus Christ, the supreme leader destined to triumph over the forces of evil. Some view the woman as a personification of the church, with the pains of childbirth representing the ongoing struggles of the church against adverse forces. Regardless of the chosen interpretation, the woman of Revelation, chapter 12, plays a significant role in the apocalyptic narrative, whether as Israel, Mary, or the Church. She personifies resilience, faith, and the struggle against the forces of evil, marking her as a protagonist in the cosmic saga between good and evil. 
In contrast, we have the woman of Babylon, whose description in Revelation 17 evokes images of luxury, decadence, and connection to corrupt systems. Chapter 17, verses 3 to 6, describes her as seated on a scarlet beast, full of names of blasphemy, with seven heads and ten horns. Clothed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, precious stones, and pearls, she holds a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. On her forehead is written the mysterious name, the great Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and the witnesses of Jesus, leaving the observer amazed with great admiration. Described as wearing clothes of purple and red, adorned with gold, jewels, and pearls, this image reflects a complex duality. She represents not only pride but also corrupted morality. The visual richness of the description suggests an influential and powerful figure, but it is the nature of her actions that reveals the true essence. Holding a cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication, this woman symbolizes the spread of morally condemnable practices, leading people away from God. She is interpreted as a personification of corrupt systems, representing false religions, diverted earthly power, or moral decay. The later passage in Revelation highlights the global influence of this woman, stating that she reigns over the kings of the earth. This dominion over leaders indicates a direct connection to the forces that cause destruction and chaos. By riding a beast, symbolizing her relationship with destructive forces, she reveals her intrinsic connection to evil. Exploring these two women, we are confronted with the choice between following the divine light, represented by the woman clothed with the sun, or succumbing to the temptations and corruptions of the world, personified by the woman of Babylon. The message is clear, while one represents the victory of good over evil, the other warns of the dangers of worldly seduction and moral decay. However, the narrative does not merely dwell on the description of the women. The Book of Revelation, chapter 17, verses 16 and 17, prophesies the eventual downfall of the woman of Babylon. And the ten horns that you saw on the beast are those that will hate the prostitute and make her desolate and naked, and they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire, because God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his purpose and be of the same mind, and give his kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. The description emphasizes that the ten horns on the beast, symbolizing power and authority, turn against her. This dramatic turn suggests a betrayal among forces that were previously aligned. The horns, representative of leaders or authorities, demonstrate a shift in loyalty, indicating that those who were once under the influence of the woman of Babylon will now turn against her, symbolizing internal self-destruction among the forces of evil. Thus, the woman of Babylon becomes a powerful metaphor, warning about the seduction of sin and the ephemeral nature of diverted earthly power. After the fall of the woman of Babylon, the subsequent chapters of the book of Revelation describe a celestial scene of jubilation and worship. The narrative transitions to the heavens, where a great multitude celebrates divine justice and the defeat of the forces of evil. There is an exaltation in response to the judgment on Babylon, highlighting God's righteousness in dealing with structures that oppose His purpose. In this setting, one of the most splendid and symbolically profound moments is the depiction of the wedding feast of the Lamb, found in Revelation, chapter 19, verses 7-9. This celestial event is a glorious vision of the ultimate union between Christ and His Church, personified as the bride or spouse. Let us rejoice and exult and give Him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready, it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. In this passage, we are invited to partake in the joy and celebration surrounding the marriage of the Lamb. The language used suggests a festive atmosphere, underscoring the importance and grandeur of this cosmic moment. The preparation of the bride, described as adorned in bright and pure fine linen, symbolizes the purity and righteousness of the saints comprising the church. These white garments represent the good deeds and righteousness of the faithful, granted by divine grace.
The emphasis on purity highlights the significance of sanctification and the fidelity of believers, preparing for this transcendental moment. The image of the wedding feast also harks back to Jesus' promise to return and take with him those who follow him. The marriage of the Lamb is more than a ceremony, it is a symbol of the final consummation of the complete union between Christ and his church. The language of the feast underscores the intimate and festive nature of this encounter, where joy overflows, and believers revel in the fullness of God's presence. In concluding this magnificent portrayal, the invitation is extended to all the blessed, those called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. This is a call to the faithful, a promise of participation in eternal joy at the celestial banquet marking the beginning of a new era. This vision not only offers hope and consolation but also encourages believers to live lives of righteousness and dedication, eagerly anticipating the day they will partake in this glorious feast alongside the Lamb. Bringing these teachings to the present day, we are challenged to make conscious choices. We must question whether we are following the light of truth and resisting the seduction of the fleeting and corruptible things of this world. The woman clothed with the sun encourages us to persevere in faith, while the woman of Babylon warns us of the consequences of deviating from the path of righteousness. May these lessons not only remain in our minds but manifest in our daily choices, shaping a life grounded in truth, righteousness, and the hope of the eternal feast with the Lamb. I hope you enjoyed the video, please share our video and leave a like, and keep watching, click on one of the two videos that will appear to continue watching. God bless. See you soon.